How are you? All good. Good. Cold night here. Uh, three. Good, Koto. We just uh, give it another couple of minutes. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we'll just give it another couple of minutes in case we've got anyone uh, coming in a wee bit late. Cool. Kia ora, Dave. Kia ora, Carmen. How are you all? You well? Chipper. Very good. A good word. Chipper. Fantastic. I'm going to let the end, Dave. Another couple. Yeah, we've just got, uh, I think we've got 26 people in the, um, oh, in the room. Yeah, yeah, we've good. just started recording. Good. I think we might as well kick off. In, um, kia ora koutou. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time and effort to come on board for this public meeting. Um, we'll just start, Justin, if you wouldn't mind providing a karakia. Um, <laughs> I'll just pass to um, Councillor Kevin Malcolm, who's the Freshwater Management Unit Councillor. Uh, good, thanks, David. Hey, look, welcome everybody, uh, look, and, and welcome tonight to uh, the Zoom the Zoom meeting. Uh, look, we'd far rather be in a hall, a garage, or a meeting room somewhere having a good old chat. But uh, with the way things are in the world at the moment, with this COVID and that about, uh, we've had to go to this method, um, and that simply is at this stage. So. Uh, and we'll get through it. Uh, look, the aim is to get a really good and fit for purpose land and water plan. Uh, we've been told we, we need to get up that up to scratch and we're, we're going to do it right. Um, we're going to put a target in a really strong position uh, to face the environmental challenges that we have now and certainly the challenges that we may have in the future. And it's our chance really to, to shape uh, a target for future generations. So I think if we keep that at the top of mind, the moves we make now are, are, are pretty jolly important. There is a, there's a heck of a lot of really great work being done right throughout uh, this FMU. Um, look, from the, from the Sawyer Undies project, which is a great environmental project uh, through all our schools and different areas, and uh, right down to the new Pleasant River stuff that's happening. So there's a lot of really good stuff, but we've, we've got to keep uh, our eye on the ball and just keep things progressing. Uh, and, and just, I think at this, this point, it's really critical that we all actually get on the same page and uh, get in, get in the same walker and actually really make things happen together. Um, put aside any differences we may have and really start working for this environment and for our target and, and its people. So uh, we've got a really big challenge. Uh, please, if you have any difficulties with this process, get on. Um, Alexandra Graham Bell was around a long time ago. Don't hesitate to get on a phone and uh, give, give someone a call and uh, there's heaps of support at ORC. The staff are really trying to make this work really, really hard. And there's even some, a uh, few of us, well, us councillors also want to make it happen. So get on the phone if you're in difficulty, but uh, I'll hand back to the team to, to get this underway. Thanks again for coming and uh, let's have a good old chat tonight. Thanks very much. Kia ora, councillor. And a good analogy about being in the same walker, needing to um, row in the same direction. Uh, so, as Councillor um, Malcolm has said, we'd rather be meeting face to face. And although we're not now, we will be coming back to you uh, towards the middle and end of this year um, to have face to face public meetings. Um, of course, everything, uh, everything going well. So the purpose of this meeting is to uh, identify your fresh water values in the North Targo Freshwater Management Unit and hear from your, you the characteristics that contribute to those freshwater values. And Amber, if we wouldn't mind just moving on to the next slide, we'll, we'll show you a map of the freshwater management unit. So once we've identified those values, uh, we can then work out what environmental outcomes we need to deliver to provide for those values. So Amber's just brought up a map of the North Otago freshwater management unit. The blue line is very important because that is the freshwater area or the freshwater resource 
uh, we are referring to, or the area, the catchment and, and freshwater management unit, that's the area we're ref referring to when we talk about this. It's important because it, um, these areas may cut across or not align with what you'd consider as communities of interest or um, rural towns, et cetera. So just before we kick off, I'll get run through a few logistics. Firstly, um, important to note the Zoom session is being recorded. Uh, it'll go up on the ORC website and the ORC YouTube page. Uh, sorry, uh, once once it's um, available for anyone to watch afterwards. Uh, Zoom is set up so that only one person person speaking can be seen on the screen at any one time. Please make sure you're on mute uh, so that no background noise comes through. If you have a, have a question, please write it in the chat. As we go through, I'll collate the questions and we will stop throughout for questions and answers and discussion. Um, if you want to say anything when we're going through those Q&A sessions specifically, please raise your hand. And if you can do that by going down to the little relax, reactions button at the bottom toolbar there, uh, clicking on the smiley face and there's a wee hand um, option if you can. Um, just raise that as we're uh, going through the Q&A sessions. So we really do invite you to uh, contribute to this process. Um, we've had some feedback from previous meetings that some of the questions and discussion can be quite technical. So if that starts happening, I may take it offline a wee bit. We may try and have a chat to you afterwards around that more technical detail. It's not an intent to, to shut you down. It is an intent just to keep things rolling and to make sure we are um, keeping everyone else engaged as well. And of course, we're very happy to have more detailed discussions outside this meeting, provide you contact details uh, as we need to. Um, you may have questions that are outside this process. Um, if we don't have the person who can answer those questions online, uh, we will get that person to get in touch with you. Um, and our project manager, Rachel, has just flicked through a message. Um, please contact her if you have any technical difficulties, particularly with the Zoom. Uh, so just a few introductions. Uh, firstly, Justin Tipper has Mana Whenua representing um, Moiraki Lunanga. Uh, we have Brendan Flack and Karako Edwards as Mana Whenua, you know, Mana Whenua representing Pukitaki Runaka. Uh, we have Sandra McIntyre, who's um, working for Okaha to support Mana Whenua through the Land and Water Regional Plan process. Uh, we have a couple of councillors online. I think we have Councillor Hope um, and we have uh, Councillor Malcolm as the FMU councillor who has um, just, just spoken to you. Um, Amber is Amber Smith is the policy analyst who's presenting tonight. So I'll pass over to um, Justin, Brendan, and Kalako to provide a Malafina perspective. Kapoi. Uh, kia ora everyone. Just uh, before I start going off, I'll confirm that I, I can be heard. <laughs> All good. Kapoi. Greetings, everyone, from uh, Moiraki this evening. Um, as said, my name is Justin Tepper, Chair of Te Runanga o Moiraki, and um, uh, have a very long-standing association with our, our, our waterways. By way of whakapapa, and can I just start by saying, in terms of a Māori worldview, a Ngaitahu worldview, and our relationship with water, it is grounded in, in what we call whakapapa, um, genealogy, and we... It's really central to who we are, um, even in our language. Um, if you write down to the fundamentals, when we ask who who someone is, you'll all be familiar with the term why uh, for, for water. We ask someone, who are your waters? Ko waikwe, who are you? Um, we, you know, when we look at oral narratives and creation narratives, um, a lot of people will, will be familiar with the North Island traditions of Rangi and Papa, the, the Earth Mother and the Sky Father. Whereas not a lot of people are familiar that down here in Ngaitahu, we have a, another version with, with Tangaroa, you know, the god of the sea, the god of the waters, um, and that has a, a union with Papa Tuanuku with the Earth Mother first. So, I mean, when we, when we talk about water, um, we, we have a very practical relationship, but it's, it's very much grounded in that esoterical relationship in Whakapapa. It's, it's central to our creation narratives and to our identity as, as Ngaitahu. And if that leads us into a more of a, a contemporary aspect and how we relate um, to our waterways and interact with our waterways, um, everything from ceremonial purposes to gathering kai and gathering resources. And if I look at our, our waterways in, in the, the highlighted area that we're talking about, 
um, starting up at the Waitaki. For us, our, our identity as, as Ngaitahu is hinged upon a, a, a concept called mahinga kai. And, and for those of you that uh, are unfamiliar with the term, mahinga kai is the relationship with the natural environment through the, the, the harvesting and gathering of food and resources. And for us down here in Ngaitahu, our, our economies um, depended on that. And um, if you look even as tribal indicators, identity indicators, um, for us at Ngaitahu, our mana and our reputation is hinged upon our ability to harvest traditional resource, resources, primarily from our, our, our rivers and our waterways um, throughout the district. So if I look at, um, you know, what are we doing and where are we heading? For us, it's about regaining that connection and that relationship that we had. Um, we, you know, for over 20 years now in the Waitaki, we've been growing our relationships with land, landowners, um, with stakeholders, as, as we integrate our values and embed our values and reintegrate our tikanga onto the land of, of Mahinga Kai through the re-establishment of wetlands and waterways on the, the braids of the rivers um, or, or further inland. So for us, it's, it, it's twofold. It's about reconnecting our, our people and uh, to traditional foods, traditional economies, traditional ways of doing things, but um, that that is central to our identity as a people, as as a as families, as hapu and as iwi. So I I don't want to give um, too much of a sermon, but I think the the main message I want to get across tonight is that our our relationship with with water is grounded in our identity and our whakapapa. It's central to who we are. Um, and that's reflected in our language, in our oral histories, in our narratives. And it's a relationship that endures to this day. And while um, it's, it's a lot more difficult today to enact and uphold our values and our relationships with, with the waterways, it is of no less importance. And, and so it is a huge challenge for us. And we really want to see the, the Māori of Te Wai, the Mano of Te Wai, and um, the te whakapapa o te wai, all these elements that, that make water and our relationship with water valued. So that was an awful lot of words in a very short space of time, uh, David. I'm not sure if there's any uh, questions or, or thoughts or anything to add from my cousins um, down the way. Brendan Karako, do you have uh, anything to add to that? Uh, uh, kia ora, Justin. Uh, that, yeah, that was awesome, succinct summary of of our relationship to to the way and um yeah beautiful beautiful words uh just just to add really that um some of the examples that we have of that inherited stewardship um the karakia that you used at the start uh by rakai hotu when he stood on the urawa canoe as he brought the waitaha people to to waiponamu uh that inherited stewardship comes from not only those uh those atua, those um, environmental relationships that we have, but also the human relationships. And in so doing that, we as Kaitahu have proven to, to the crown the unbroken relationship uh, to the water. And we have, we have now a number of uh, customary protected areas that have gone through rigorous and often um, painful um, conversations and we have Taiapuri and Mataitai in the North Otago area. We have a Taiapuri that's been gazetted about 22 years ago, the East Otago Taiapuri, and we have a, a Mataitai. And these are both connected to the Mahinga Kai that Justin spoke about. The Waikawaiti Mataitai is one of the few freshwater Mataitai in Aotearoa, New Zealand. And we have a project on that called Hepataka Waiora. Now, this is a 200-year a, a restoration plan that we have for our little awa. It's not as mighty as the Waitaki. It's a, it's a small river, but it's, it's, a, it's a loved water, and it's, uh, it's an important water for the community of uh, Pukitaraki. And this 200-year plan, if you like, we're 30 years into it. Well, we're not quite 30 years. We're into our third decade of restoration of that awa. And it, it speaks to those mahinga kai sites that sustain the people 
of this place. And in many people's world, nothing is more important than that connection to the Mahinga Kai. Uh, but I'm going to pass on to uh, Korako just to um, perhaps give his insights into some of the aspirations that we have uh, for our fresh, fresh water uh, in the future. Kia ora. Kia ora, Brendan and, and Justin for your um, for your corridor so far. Uh, yeah, so as, as Brendan said, I just um, well, I wanted to come in and talk a little bit about the aspirations as one of the younger um, whānau coming through from from our from our runaka. Uh, so I, one of the things that was touched on was about the mahika kai practice, and so within within that mahika kai practice, there's um, kawa protocols and tikaka. Um, which are way you know the correct ways of doing things, and and there's a lot of uh, matauraka Māori within that practice as well. So an aspiration I have for you know several generations down the track is that we are you know active in participating in in the transmission of that tikaka and kawa um, to our younger generations, and that that can be um, practiced in waterways which are um, healthy and flourishing, and and um, have have those mahika kai species um, available. Uh, Another aspiration is to see the the uh, concept of kiutiki tai or the, the the flowing of water from the mountains to the to the ocean. Um, I th an aspiration would be to see that that our major water our major waterways are um, connected with continuous flow from the from the mountains to the sea, including uh, the contributing flows uh, that come from um, tributaries and springs, puna and um, uh, wetlands as well. Um, we also would like to see uh, something that's been spoken about in the freshwater uh, visions hui that we held in, in 2020 with um, Alfano and Otago is the safe contact of people um, able to swim and use the rivers recreationally without fear of, of contaminants or um, becoming sick. So there's another aspiration um, that would like to see, or I'd like to see that it is the birthright of our, our tamariki and our mokopuna to be able to swim safely in, in the waterways. Um, another vision I had thought of, um, which closely connects to the restoration work that's being done on the Waikawaiti and the mahi that Moiraki um, are doing and uh, planned mahi to come is that the, the restoration work can mean that there are parts within the, the North Otago area where, where I will be able to go um, with Fano and gaze upon an area that is would be familiar to our tipuna 200 years in the past, as Brendan had talked about, we have a 200 year vision in the future, which looks at um, recordings of what the sites look like 200 years in the past. It's another um, quite strong aspiration that I'd like to see. Um, and that that those that re that um, restoration work um, may also require the reintroduction of species that that are that are no longer there, be it plant species or fish species or birds as well. So um, that's the other thing. And yeah, another aspiration I thought of is, is um, just what someone had mentioned before is that mahitahi, that cooperation and seeing um, stakeholders and land users and people who, who rely on the water, which is which is, is everyone. We know that we need that for our health, that that everyone is um, working together to a common goal and that we're, we're adopting that Q to Kitai approach where restoration um, and look, caring for our waterways is beginning at the top of the catchment and, and working down so that we are seeing that, that, that the, the health at the top of the water is, is being reflected at the bottom of the catchment. So those are, yeah, so some of the aspirations that I have um, for the waterways and, and also just like to take this opportunity to thank um, people like Justin and Brendan and, and the other rakatira from, from Kaitahu and across the Motu for the, the mahi they've done uh, so far to, to get us to where we are today and um, give my generation the opportunity to, to continue that, that taki and, and go forward. So kia ora, kia ora everybody. Kia ora Justin, kia ora Brendan, kia ora Karako. Um, that does provide uh, important context for why we're here and what we're seeking to achieve. I see in the uh, participants list there is a, there are a number of very well informed, very engaged people. So again, really do encourage you to uh, jump in with any questions you have in the chat box, and we'll catch up with you 
um, as we go through and, and we'll stop the presentation to um, have a bit of a Q&A uh, and discussion. So I'll pass to Amber Smith uh, to run through the presentation, please, Amber. Kia ora koutou. Thanks, David. Ko Amber toko ingoa. And I just want to say thank you to uh, Justin, Brendan, and Krakow for that really over important overview of why water matters. Water is why we are here tonight, specifically how we will look after and improve our water through the new land and water regional plan. This presentation is for the general public to understand what we are doing and how they can be involved. There may be some attending tonight, as David said, who have a lot of experience in this area. And if that is you, then please bear with me while I cover some basics. There will be a couple of chances for you to contribute to the conversation throughout this presentation. Tonight, I'll talk about a couple of things. The first is the what, why and how of the new land and water regional plan. The second is the vision and values for the North Otago FMU how we will use your feedback and the next steps of the consultation. So first up, what is a land and water regional plan? A land and water regional plan manages activities that have an impact on our natural resources, particularly fresh water, and sits above the district planning documents. The plan will include objectives, policies, and rules. Rules will specify which activities will be permitted and which activities will require a resource consent. Some examples of activities that would require resource consent are water taken use, intensive winter grazing, or discharges to land or water. Why do we need a new plan? Our current water plan is out of date. It was notified in 1998, so it will be 25 years old next year when we notify our new plan. Our environment has changed a lot in these last 25 years. Increasing urbanisation, intensifying agricultural development and climate change are having a real impact on our natural environment. The resulting degradation in water quality has many impacts. Declining biodiversity, threatened species and risks to human health are just a few examples. Fresh water reform and the goal of improving fresh waterways within a generation has brought with it a raft of new expectations of the regional council. We are required to maintain our fresh water where quality is good and improve where there is where it is bad. New legislation which will affect the water plan includes the National Policy Statement on Freshwater Management, which brings me to the next slide. The hierarchy of plans. The creation of the new land and water regional plan is governed by a number of documents, beginning with the Treaty of Waitangi. The Resource Management Act allows the use of natural resources whilst promoting sustainable management. The National Policy Statement for Freshwater Management is our guiding document in this plan making process. It includes the National Objectives Framework, which ensures prudent management of water for future generations, and Te Mana o Te Wai, which I will cover in the next slide. Moving down the hierarchy, our own regional policy statement and land and, and water regional plan together provide the framework and leadership to ensure the, that those outcomes are met. And any future district plans will in turn need to give effect to the land and water regional plan. Te Mana o Te Wai is a central concept in the National Policy Statement for Freshwater Management. An important part of Te Mana o Te Wai is that it recognises that everybody has a responsibility to look after water. Te Mana o Te Wai refers to the vital importance of water. When managing freshwater, we first must consider the health and well-being of the water. The second priority is the health needs of people, such as drinking water. The third is the ability of people and communities to provide for their social, economic and cultural well-being. This concept is also central to the management of stormwater, wastewater and drinking water. So I've covered the what and why, now let's move on to how. As mentioned before, iwi are with us every step of the way during this process, from consultation to plan drafting and through to notification. We are taking what we know from past consultations and building on that knowledge. The regional policy statement, which we consulted on during 2020, contains visions for each FMU Orohe, which feeds into the values and outcomes of the new land and water plan, as you'll see on the next slide. Alongside that, we have several work programs, including environmental monitoring and economics, which give us a better understanding of the interdependencies around water, its uses, and its current state and trends. Finally, the reason that you are all here, we need to engage with our communities to find out what you value in the natural environment. This will help us make a plan that achieves those outcomes. Another house slide, and it's a more technical one, 
but I'll talk you through it. Firstly, a freshwater management unit or rohe is basically a water catchment on a scale that we can manage. Otago is divided into five freshwater management units or FMUs, with the largest, the Klutha Mata O, divided again into five rohe, which means area. Our regional policy statement contains freshwater visions for each FMU and rohe, which I'll cover in more detail in the second half of the presentation. An example of a freshwater value is water quality. One of the characteristics of water quality is clarity. So if the public tells us that clarity is an important characteristic to them, we can create an outcome such as rivers and streams in the North Otago FMU have clear flowing water. Next, our science team will identify the attribute which we will measure to know if we are achieving our goal. In this case, the uh, example attribute is suspended fine sediment. We can set up a monitoring program to measure this attribute in our water. To achieve this outcome, that we will then set limits on water and land use activities, which could contribute to high levels of suspended fine sediment in rivers and streams. Some examples would be rules about discharges, setbacks for earthworks or stock exclusion. And after that slide, I think we'll pause and I will see if there are any questions. Cheers, Eber. Uh, any questions, again, please just put it uh, in the chat or uh, raise your hand uh, using the uh, little reaction at the bottom. And but just while we're waiting for uh, questions to come through, um, you talked about the district plans giving effect to the land and water regional plan. And I know there are a few rural folk who uh, feel that sometimes the urban areas get off lightly. So how will district plans give effect to the land and water regional plan? Yeah, so in the case of uh, the North Otago FMU, it will be the Dunedin City Council and the Waitaki District Council. Uh, our plan will govern their plans. So if we want to see improvements in a particular area, their plans will need to give effect to, to that. And that will mean their rules will affect, will reflect our um, goals for that area. Thanks, Amber. So that might mean, I guess, uh, when they, the discharges come up for consents or, um, or land use that is non-regulatory, um, for, for instance, um, remediation and potentially also subdivision. Goals around subdivision. And one, another, another um, area in which I guess there's a real, there's a, something that hasn't been particularly well done in the past, but the regional plan has a real place in terms of um, providing direction for the district plans is in terms of things like stormwater management um, so that that can get dealt with much more in a much more holistic and integrated way than it has been in the past. So it's, you're not just having to, you know, deal with it once the once a discharge has got into a waterway. That it, if if the regional plan provides direction, then you can deal with it much more in terms of the land use as well as what happens when it comes out the end of the pipe. Thanks, Sandra. Uh, yeah, if I might. Sorry, I might butt in there as well and just to say that um, yeah, the Land and Water Regional Plan will also have um, controls on stormwater and wastewater. So there will be urban as well as rural discharges managed in the new plan. Cheers, Delana. Um, and Amber mentioned on one of the earlier slides that there's, uh, there'll be a, a body of information, economics, monitoring, science. If you look at the web page, the um, North Otago FMU web page at the moment. It's fairly sparse, but over time we will start populating that. Uh, so we have a question here um, from uh, Bori R. How does this planning fit in with three waters reforms? Uh, I can take that, David. Um, so we were having a discussion, well, there's been lots of discussions about this and essentially our plan will affect whoever is in charge of the infrastructure, the stormwater, wastewater, drinking water infrastructure. Um, our plan doesn't really take into consideration whose infrastructure that is. Um, they will have to give effect to, to our plan essentially. So in that sense, uh, whether it's the district, uh, councils, the territorial authorities or another entity, uh, 
their um, you know, discharges and, and water quality will be governed by our plan. Um, not sure if that makes it clear. So no matter who owns it, they'll be subject to the same rules or the That's same right. requirements to deliver. Yeah. Jane, how do you place a weighting on each value that is put forward and what matrix do you use for this? How do you put preference on one value over another and how do you make sure the regulatory framework on these are practical and workable? It's easy to want everything, um, anything, but that is quite simply not practical. So concerns around how, um, whether the, the plan will be too aspirational and not uh, take into account some of the practical issues that resource users are facing. Uh, yep, um, I'll just say quickly, although um, Sandra or, or Delina might have more to say on this, uh, we are uh, consulting with a wide range of stakeholders. We're working alongside mana whenua and uh, consulting with communities and uh, stakeholders on this. Plus we've got central government direction. So there's a whole raft of input um, to, to make sure that we are prioritizing the right things and that it will be a practical solution. But um, possibly there's some other people who have something to say on that. Yeah, I think Delina's got uh, the hand up. Yeah, yeah. So um, you're right. It, that this is going to be part of the, the difficult part of the process that we actually have to look at all of these things and come up with a, a workable solution. Of course, we um, because of the MPS FM, we have to put the health and well-being of the water at the top of the um, the top of the priority. Um, that, that's what we have to do, and, and then look at the other things at, at, as the second and third priorities. But that's also why we're consulting today as well, because as we look at these things, we have to look at what the community prioritises as part of that process as well. So while we're also going through that NPSFM process, what the community considers as important um, also needs to be taken into consideration. So all of those things will be um, considered as we go through the process. And when we come back to um, the community, which I think Amber is going to talk about further on in her um, presentation, um, we will come back with a range of scenarios which will consider each of these things in different ways. And we will be able to discuss what each of those mean and what potentially the preferred scenario will look like. Thanks, Delina. Uh, does that cover it, Jane? Um, yep, thank you. I think I'm I'm off off mute now. Um, I guess again, I'm just yeah again concerned in terms of how much modelling will be done on those social and economic um, values. But I take it from you that you will be um, because I understand the prioritisation scenario. But it's just um, again there needs still needs to be that waiting done to, in order to be practical, or we may as well. <laughs> all um you know we can't just turn the light off and walk away so that's important to be recognized yeah thanks jane and i've got some i'll flick you through some information around the economic impact assessment we're working some of those industry good bodies as well to um to inform that um and and as amber's about to say uh present, we, it also goes as time frames as well yeah, can I, I just want to add there as well. So that it's really important that everybody participates in the um, survey as well, because all of those values need to be taken into consideration. So um, don't forget to fill out the survey, which again, Amber will come to in her presentation later on. Cheers, Alana. Do you want to kick on, Amber? Great, all day. Okay then, thanks for those questions. Um, in the final part of this presentation, I will discuss the vision and values for the North Otago FMU, the three stages of consultation, and how to submit your feedback through our survey. In front of us is the North Otago FMU long-term vision, which is part of the proposed regional policy statement. Our plan needs to work towards this vision. You can see a focus on food production, climate resilience, restoration of water bodies, indigenous species, and the relationship of Kaitahu with Wahi Tupuna. Now we come to values. A value is something that you treasure or that is important to you. The National Policy Statement for Freshwater Management directs us to include compulsory values, consider others and identify with community any further values that are relevant to your FMU. 
The compulsory values that we must include are ecosystem health, human contact, threatened species and mahika kai. There are values that uh, must be considered and with your help we'll identify values specific to your area. At this stage it would be great if you could share um, which of these values are important to you and whereabouts or if you think of any values which aren't written here. Feel free to write these down in the chat box or raise your hand if you'd like to talk to us. I can see Delina has her hand up. Or was that from before? <laughs> Fair enough. Alrighty, well, I'll crack on. And if you think of any values, then just um, pop them in the chat box or you can raise your hand and, and let us know what they are. Alrighty. Actually, I'll, I'll just pause there because I know I've got some some active catchment group leaders. I just uh, wonder if someone brave enough to jump in and just explain what they value about their local waterways and what they're doing to deliver on um, on those values, both their values and the community values. I'll buy you a coffee. Come on, you can jump in. Oh, look, I'll talk in, on behalf of NOSLAM, if you like. I'm sorry, I don't want to take up too much airtime. Um, that's why I wrote down my question before instead of speaking it. But um, Jane Smith and I am a sheep and beef farmer up the headwaters of the Kakanui River um, and been involved in NOSLAM for a decade um, now. Um, and look, we just take a real integrated approach. So, um, and that really, um, we were kickstarted again by the original NOSLAM members. And I think Grant Ludeman's one of those online tonight. Um, and um, really kickstarted by the Kakanui Community Catchment Project that we were involved in about um, seven, or eight, seven or eight years ago, probably. Um, and that, that showed it was really important to have everyone around the table. And that's what we've um, certainly um, tried to achieve. Um, so we have a whole lot of different work streams. And I think Kevin Malcolm um, mentioned one before in terms of the work that we're doing with the wider community, um, schools, um, the Saw Your Undies project, um, and then we have two other work streams, and that is uh, um, obviously on-farm practice change, so good outcomes, um, and we really drive forward a, a, a vision there that it's individual um, responsibility, so all individuals taking responsibility for a better collective outcome. Um, and, uh, and, you know, that really drives really well into the FMU values process, so we feel... Um, that, that, that we're well situation, situated to be helpful in that. And we've got some of our members online on this discussion tonight. Um, and then we have another work stream and that's um, the wider network um, of other people that are involved in, in land management, but not necessarily land owners, et cetera. So that's contractors and advisors, et cetera. So they have quite an influence um, and we want that to be a good one. So um, without taking too much more air time up, um, this FMU process is something that we're actually really, um, you know, really interested in and really excited in, especially if we can, um, you know, be around that table and um, being really constructive and taking quite a holistic approach um, and we certainly, yeah, certainly hope we can add some value to that. Thanks, David. Cheers, Jane. I think uh, the work you're doing just uh, definitely aligns with uh, Kyuta Kitai, um, which the Mana Whenua um, presentation touched on as well. Sorry for interrupting, and I owe you a coffee, Jane. Amber, back to you. Great, thanks. Thanks, David. Okay, we're nearly at the end of this presentation with time for more questions at the end. Uh, right now, I just want to talk about what the rest of the consultation looks like and how you can give feedback. We're in the first of three consultation stages. Once we receive your feedback, we will work with our science team to come up with some management options to achieve a range of environmental outcomes. These will be presented and discussed with you in July or August of this year. The third stage of consultation will be the presentation of a preferred management option, which will happen towards the end of this year. Next year, we will be, we will be writing the plan with mana whenua, taking it to council and then following the RMA process so that it can be notified in December next year. How can you have a say? We wish we were having this conversation with you in person, but because of COVID, we uh, can't be there face to face right now. So we've created a survey which can be taken online or in paper format to find out your values and the locations of those values. You can fill out the survey online, which I will demonstrate in a moment. 
We can also send out a paper survey to anyone who cannot get online. If you would like to request a paper copy, just contact our customer services team on the 0800 number or by email, and they will send out a paper survey with a return envelope. The survey is open for four weeks. I will now show you the online survey so you can see what it's all about. So the most terrifying part of this presentation is uh, sharing a different screen for me. Here we go. This is the ORC landing page. You'll see right on the front, land and water plan, get involved. You can click on that button. And it will take you through uh, to this page, which David mentioned um, uh, on the left-hand side is each FMU or Rohe. And if you want some more information about the North Otago FMU, you can click on that button there, North Otago FMU, uh, to see the science summaries and economic summaries, which will be uploaded. Um, you can also see uh, the map of FMU boundaries. Uh, you can see the online meetings that we're currently having. And uh, here's a bit about the online survey. So if you uh, click the button to take the survey, it will bring you to the survey page. There is a little bit of blurb about how to fill out the survey. Um, the survey can take quite a while if you want to give a lot of feedback. Um, and it can be a little uh, repetitive as well. So um, just keep that in mind. Uh, maybe don't do it when you're in a rush to pick up the kids from school or something like that. Um, uh, at the top, you can choose the uh, FMU that you want to answer for. So if you'd like to answer for more than one FMU, you'll need to do the survey more than once. Um, under two, we have the values here. These are the, some of the values that we've discussed. At the bottom, it says something else. That's for your own value. If there's anything that you want to put in there that, that is not um, here in this list. So when you click a value, for example, swimming, uh, there'll be a couple of fields pop up and it's asking you about those characteristics of swimming, which ones are important to you. And you just fill out as much as you want. And then it asks you to rate those characteristics. And again, you don't have to fill out everyone, just the ones that matter to you. So each value will have its own characteristics um, and you can rate all of those. At the bottom, there's just a few uh, optional questions and then you can click submit at the bottom. When you click submit, it will take you to a screen which will prompt you to go to our mapping tool. And I really would encourage you to use our mapping tool. It's quite a lot of fun. Here it is. Uh, when you click on add pin, it shows you all of those values again. And again, at the bottom is the value of something else, if there's something that we've missed out there. So you can scroll into the North Otago FMU and uh, you can find exactly the space where you uh, enjoy fishing, for example, and you can just pop a fishing pin there. You can pop as many pins down as you want and you can add comments, you can add photographs, you can tell us as much as you want to about that area and the value. You'll also notice that um, you do need to register with an email address and a password. Um, once you've registered, then you can put as many pins down as you want and uh, you click submit on that. And so that's how we're finding out the uh, locational information, which is quite important for our um, science team and those, uh, those, that modeling that we just spoke about earlier. So now I'll just go back to the main slide. And see if there's some more questions, David. Do we have any more questions on the process? I know it's, um, it can seem a bit complex and a wee bit fluffy, dare I say, but uh, this is a really important process so we can come back to you um, middle to the end of this year and, and really hone in on some of those chunky conversations around, okay, what are we going to do about it? So please uh, take the time to fill out the survey uh, and please also uh, pass the survey on to your contacts and friends and whanau. Have we got any questions around the process or any other questions, in fact? No, clear as mud. Uh, so 
again, any uh, any questions as we just sort of conclude this meeting, please put them in the chat box or, uh, or put your hand up. Grant, Grant Ludeman. Hi, David. Um, on one of your slides, you said no more modification of waterways. Could you could you just clarify that a bit more? Because living on the Kakanui River, we we're losing constantly losing land uh, to the river, and uh, as floods come down and and gravel shift and that sort of stuff, and, and there is a certain amount of uh, modification that continually needs done in, in rivers. And I just wondered whether that was um, thought through. Yeah, thanks, Grant. So um, that's in the North Otago Freshwater Management. Is that the North Targo? Yeah, North Targo FMU vision that came out of the proposed regional policy statement. Delina, Sandra or Amber, do you want to grab that? I, I oh. can um, I can have a go if you like, um, <laughs> David. The, the National Policy Statement of Freshwater Management has a, a, a pretty strong direction um, that about which says essentially that there should be no further loss of the extent or values of water bodies, which is essentially saying um, we want to, well, we want to stop doing, you know, the things that have been done in the past in terms of channelising and narrowing rivers and turning them into something which doesn't allow their natural functions to happen. There is a tension um, between achieving that outcome and, as you say, um, dealing with areas where there are significant natural hazard risks. Um, and that is clearly a tension that is going to have to be looked at um, in the development of the land and water plan. Um, it's a tension. I know that even in the um, submissions on the regional policy statement is quite apparent in terms of some people's submissions on that. I think, um, I guess what I would say in terms of that is we need to be looking at um, creative solutions for trying to resolve the tension between those things. Um, and one of the ways of doing that is, I, I guess, asking the questions in terms of the way in which we manage hazard risks as to are there ways we can do this that is working more with the way that the water body naturally works or are we doing something that isn't taking notice of that um, and I think that's really the sort of question that we are, are going to be needing to be looking at in terms of how the plan is development, it, it developed and how it's implemented. Does that, does that answer your question? It probably doesn't entirely. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. I know it's something we will be able to submit on as time goes by, but but um, yeah, look, uh, I, I think uh, you know where it causes extreme flooding and those sorts of things. I think all those things need to re be reviewed on a, on a on a reasonably regular basis, and that's why the OIC is engineers, I guess, on its on its staff. But but look, just following on from Jane Smith, can I just say? on behalf of the irrigators and, um, you know, I farm and irrigate both on the Kakanui and, and the Wairika Creeks and that, you know, we're very, we're very aware of the effects on the river and, and we do our best uh, to minimise them. them. But I, I just want to say, look, we have a really vibrant rural community out there right down in the whole district now because of irrigation. And I know in the old water plan, um, and, I, and I, took, uh, I took advantage of it in the early days on storage of water um, off, off farm and that, and, and I'd like to see those things uh, put in. Uh, we have a, an allocation committee on the river, which has worked ex exceptionally well over the past uh, 20 odd years, I guess. and, and um, you know, by self-management, we've, we've kept the river within the minimum flows that have been given. But, uh, you know, and I know all farmers are, have got environmental farm plans now. And, and I just like to think that, that any, any restrictions put on us are based on science at the end of the day. But uh, for us, it, it's stock and domestic water that's, that's also very important too. But, 
But yeah, look, uh, we look forward to this process going forward and I know uh, we will certainly be working with you. Thank you, Grant. And if I can be so bold, I think uh, gravel extraction uh, is, it is, is an example where you, uh, it's not just a case of where and when um, is driven by uh, those, those visions and including, uh, for example, when uh, you, you take it out, where you take it out from. So in more targeted uh, engineering aimed at, um, aimed at delivering on those, uh, those sort of natural values. Uh, Jen has a question here. In the survey, how would you distinguish between waterways? For example, if you chose swimming, question five asks how it has been for five years. Now, this may differ between rivers. Some may be better than others. It's a very generalized tool. And how do you expect the online map tool to be used to specify rivers? Yeah, so um, you're right. The survey is very generalized. And um, I guess we're asking you about waterways within that FMU in the survey. The online map is where we'll get that locational information. And if you want to specify, you know, which river, the location and you know what you think of the condition then that's all really great information that we will will use if you can share that would be fantastic cheers emma and dougal's got a question uh, the process and values have been human centered um, when the biggest challenge collective challenge uh, is matching emissions reduction to remain within 1.5 degrees celsius is the council going to make any attempt to align this plan for our land and water management with that requirement, I guess, for emissions reduction um, and potentially also adaptation mitigation. Um, I, I can't speak to the emissions reduction. Someone else may be able to. Um, in terms of it being human centred, there are human centred elements, uh, but there are also a lot of questions around ecological processes, for example, uh, aquatic life and uh, riparian planting, um, you know, plants and animals that live in the water and all sorts of ecological processes. There's a lot of um, information that we're getting from the survey around that as well. I uh, don't know if anyone else wants to have their go at the emissions part of that question. Um, I, would, I would just suggest, um, Dougal, that if you want to um, highlight that then then make that message clear um yeah <laughs> so that it's so that it's clearly in the mix yeah i think um osc is going down a uh, climate change program do good i'm not sure on the uh the specifics but can pro probably provide some information we get a new climate change advisor on shortly so i, I guess a, a meeting with rise wise response will be on the cards and also um i imagine you probably submitted to the proposed regional policy statement as well. Um, and you may have mentioned that. Um, speaking of which, uh, Amber, we've talked about the proposed regional policy statement quite a few times, just in terms of how that is proposing the lines on the map, and also how that is proposing the freshwater vision, the North Otago freshwater management vision. Do you want to uh, just touch on the proposed regional policy statement, um, where it's at? in the process and the ability to have, the, have your say or not have your say? Um, maybe someone else could do that, David. I think Anita took that question yesterday. I can, I can probably cover that. Um, the regional policy statement was notified um, last year. Um, and so there has been a submission process, um, which again, was held last year so the submission process is closed off and the the um freshwater there's a, a because um the central point the central part of the um regional policy statement is to do with freshwater management that it's going to be heard through a freshwater planning process and um the freshwater commissioner who hears that has um recently announced that the hearings will be starting at the end of May on that um, and they'll probably run for a number of months so there will be uh, I guess what the what the regional policy statement does is it provides that sort of overarching framework for what happens in the land and water plan um, as David mentioned the the visions the vision for the North Otago 
FMU and for the other FMUs actually sit in the regional policy statement. So um, the submissions that people have made on the visions will be dealt with through that hearing process. Um, similarly, the, the Freshwater Management Unit boundaries sit in the um, regional policy statement. Um, those, there has only been one submission on shifting the boundaries of the Freshwater Management Units, and that was um, by Kaitahu Kiotago, so I can tell you about that one. Um, and that is that we have asked for the boundary between the North Otago FMU and the Dunedin and Coast FMU to be shifted so that the Waikawaiti River catchment sits in the Dunedin and Coast catchment, which um, aligns it better in terms of the way in which um, Pukitaraki um, managing the areas around the um, the estuaries and the in the coastal taiapare around that area. Cheers, Sandra. I think Delaney, you want to add to that? Yeah, yeah, I do. Thanks, Sandra. That that was really useful. Um, yeah, I just just like to. We've been chatting with our science team about this very question because we need to come up with some limits and rules that um, reflect each of the um, char characteristics of, of the catchments. And we can't have, um, we can't, we don't have the resources to do every individual catchment. So we do, um, we are going to do a um, group together um, rivers that have similar characteristics using some kind of um, catchment, um, some, some kind of um, scheme. Sorry, I'm just going to look at my notes. I, I made some notes about this because it's quite important. Um, so we're using a river classification, some kind of river classi classification system um, to divide each FMU into um, river management classes that have similar characteristics, um, such as mountain, hill, lowland, etc. And then if there's any that don't kind of fit within those, there will be um, some that might have specific um, pressures or issues, then um, we'll deal with them in an individual way. Um, does that answer your question, Jo? Yep, she said it does, yep. She gave a thumbs up. I think that's an important part of the process as well. We'll we'll do that work, then come back to the community um, mid to late at that consultation phase two and phase three, and explain what that actually means in a material sense. Uh, do we have any other questions, comments, points of discussion? Oh, yeah. Um, so as Amber said, uh, the if you could go on to the next slide, please, Amber. Uh, I can see Grant has his hand up. I'm not sure if that's no, that's a historical it's, hand. Okay, it's a re residual hand. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> so as Amber said, uh, the survey will close 14th April of this year. Uh, please take the time to fill it out. You only have to fill out those values that you want to fill out. Uh, that you find important. Um, and please also um, pass it on to your friends, Fano contacts um, to, to also fill out the survey. It's really important that this gets done so we can then come back and have that detailed discussion with you uh, mid end of this year. As Amber says, if you need a paper copy, please get in touch with our customer services team. The North Otago Freshwater Management Unit web page will be constantly updated as we go through the process of developing that information. Um, when we have information relevant to the FMU, we will put it up on that page. So as you go through the survey, if you want to stay in touch on the any updates around the project, please provide your contact details. And it can only be used for the purpose of this survey, so don't uh, we won't be um, sending you marketing or spam. Uh, again, we will be in uh, in your area to talk face to face on some of those chunky sort of discussions. The the, the so what discussions uh, in the second half of 2022. Um, and I should say, staff will stick around for a little longer after this presentation is completed. Um, if you want to have a
talk further with a staff member or have a bit of a broader discussion, um, please stay online and we can uh, we will stick around and have a bit of a chat after as well. So appreciate you taking the time and effort to jump on board. Um, really important that you have feedback to this process and we really value the opportunity to have this, uh, this chat. Uh, Councillor Malcolm, have you got any concluding comments? Have you got me there, David? We do. Good. I've got a lovely slide in front of me. Hey, look, uh, again, thanks indeed for, for coming along and taking the time out this evening. But listen, we actually got to continue to improve our environment. But one, one of the key things is we've actually got to balance the need uh, as individuals and as communities to improve our communities and ensure that our communities are sustained. So that whole balance must, you know, just needs to be incorporated uh, without doubt. We, we, look, the minister has come out wanting environmental change, and he wants it, and he wants it done. And he's always talked about a generational change, but the key part is to start now. And when you look at what we're we're actually doing within our within our district now, it's just a huge amount. I, I already mentioned the Pleasant River and what Noslam are doing, but just some of the other things uh, that I, I I thought are pretty important for everyone to get an understanding what what is happening on on the Shag River at the moment. There's a nutrient study happening. And that's in conjunction with Ravens down the RRC. The Cora River, uh, there's a groundwater study. Uh, there's a North Otago groundwater study uh, right through the Waitaki Plains and down to Kakanui. Uh, on the Wanakarua, there's uh, 15, uh, 15 testing sites going on to, onto that river to ensure things are, are flowing and life is good in there. And of course, we've had uh, that, that very good Wairika Creek stuff done by, by Noslam, and I think it was in conjunction with the University of Otago. So there's, there's a heck of a lot of very, very good stuff uh, happening. We've just got to, we've actually just all got to jump together and keep it going. So that's uh, that's what I'd really like to push to. And um, just just on closing, tūtul to whenua, tūtul to tangata, tūtul to mana. We look after nature so nature can look after us. So I think that's, uh, if we keep that in the back of our mind as we go forward, Get onto those surveys, but again, as I said at the start, if you've got any doubt about that or any part of the process, get onto the staff, uh, ring, ring one of us councillors. We get we get voted on to help us out, so uh, we're, we're actually really trying to do that, and we really want this land and water plan to be leading edge. Uh, we want it community based, and we want it to be driven by our communities. So we've got it right, and we know it can go into the future. So again, thanks very much for your time and. Uh, it's really much appreciated. We're really listening and we will take note. Thanks indeed. Thanks, David. Kia ora, Kevin. And I should add, um, you, you referred to the huge amount of work that's going on, huge amount of knowledge and information. I should add in the survey as well, there's the opportunity to provide general feedback. And that might include reference to reports or information that we're not aware of. So um, please do use that opportunity to provide general feedback as well. Rachel. Um, thank you, David. Kia ora koutou, everyone. Um, I'm the project manager of this work. I just wanted to jump in um, with a couple of comments um, just before we close off for the night. Um, firstly, I just wanted to um, sort of um, totuku what um, Councillor Malcolm has said. Um, North Otago is one of those areas that we recognise there is a really engaged community there and there is um, some really great and innovative things um, happening there. And so we want to keep uh, we want to be working with you um, and for that to be a partnership to, um, to make sure that we are heading towards, you know, sustainable communities and sustainable water and, and everything that that means. Um, so I just wanted to acknowledge what's happening out in that community already. Um, and also um, just to point out that um, as Kevin has said around the minister's um, aims for um, waterways, um, and the generational um, time frame. What we do have an opportunity to do there is to um, to have conversations together and also talk about as well as you know where do we want to go, how do we want to get there, and you know one of the big levers that we do have is, is time. So you know we we would be wanting to also talk to you um, as we hear from you about what's important and we look at how we get there. Is look at actually what are the timeframes that do work to get us there? Um, and it is a genuine um, conversation that we want to have and we do want to, um, to work with you um, to set 
this up well to succeed. So I just wanted to kind of reiterate that. And I also just wanted to jump in as well and just point out a bit of an error um, at the end of our presentation. Um, the North Otago FMU and the Tidy FMU are um, big FMUs with um, you know, really engage people there and a, and a lot of work to do. So we'd probably be coming back to you more uh, more the third quarter of 2022 rather than mid year. So I just wanted to um, point that out as well. So we've got, you know, quite a lot of work to do back in the office after, um, you know, after this next month to then be able to come out with you, to you with some, you know, really good information to have those conversations. So we're looking at the, um, the, the fourth quarter, not the, not the third, not halfway through the year. Kia Thanks for clarifying that, Rachel. Uh, so I'll pass to Manafina for uh, Karakia, closing Karakia. Oh, tēnā koutou. Uh, kia ora, David. Uh, and Amber for your presentation. And Rachel, Rachel Ma, uh, tēnā koutou. Um, ki muri ahau e tu whakaiti e hara ahau te kōrero, monga tūpuna e kōrero. O fiti mai taura, fiti mai tērā, kia māua, kia māua te oranga mo te iwi ki te whai ao, ki te ao maharama, o te hei mauri ora. Kia ora whānau. Kia ora. Well, that uh, concludes the consultation, uh, the presentation, sorry. So if you want to stick around and um, chat to some staff, and uh, Councillor Malcolm too, he's looking enthusiastic, please do. Kia ora. Kia ora.